In the previous video, we saw that if we use rectangular pulses to transmit the uh, binary bits, we will get a spectrum that is basically same squared or same squared multiplied by some other factor, but theoretically it goes to from minus infinity to infinity. This is in the frequency domain. The power spectral density will look like this. It's the same square multiplied by some other factor. This is if we use rectangular pulses to represent the bits. For example, we transmit binary 1, binary 0, binary 1, binary 1, binary 0, any random signal. It will look like this. This is in the time domain. And its power spectral density in the frequency domain will go theoretically from minus infinity to infinity. But there is a problem here. Is that practically speaking, any channel has a finite band. Any channel has a finite band. Either for legal reasons, for legal reasons, like the government tells you you have to use this bandwidth, you cannot use any other bandwidth. You bought this and you have to stay within this bandwidth. Okay? So this is a legal reason that you bought a certain bandwidth and you have to stick to it. You cannot go to that bandwidth of another broadcast uh, channel. For example, sports channel cannot go uh, and transmit in that news uh, bandwidth, right? So it has to stick to the bandwidth allocated to it. This is for a legal reason. Or because of physical reasons. For example, if you transmit over a wire, like wire transmission, the wire itself has a limited bandwidth. If you try to increase the bandwidth above a certain level, the wire is going to kill the signal. It's going to, the signal is going to decay very much and will not reach to the receiver. So this is a physical phenomenon that the wire itself, the channel itself, it has a limited bandwidth that you can uh, go over, right? So the channel bandwidth is, practically speaking, is finite either due to legal reasons or due to physical reasons. The channel being finite means that either it will cut your signal in the frequency domain, so part of your signal will be cut in the frequency domain, or you have to cut it before you transmit. If it is for legal reasons, you have to cut your signal before, before you transmit your signal in the air, otherwise you are going to interfere with other people, with other channels, and these other channels are going to submit a complaint and you are going to pay a, a large fine. So you have to cut either, you have to cut your bandwidth to be finite or it will be cut automatically in the wire due to the physical phenomena to a beta. This is in the frequency domain. But what happens if you cut the bandwidth in that frequency domain? What happens to the time domain? We know that the frequency domain and time domain, we have opposite relationship, right? Which means that if the frequency domain is finite, then in the time domain, the pulse will spread out, it will be infinite pulse, it will be time unlimited, right? Which means now that if you cut the power spectral density, the frequency becomes finite, the pulses, instead of being rectangular pulses, they will start to spread, they will start to spread out, spread out and become time unlimited. For example, the first pulse, instead of being time limited, like a rectangular pulse, it will start to spread like this. The second pulse also is going to, when you cut the bandwidth, make the frequency domain finite. The time domain will be infinite, like this, and this pulse will spread like this, this pulse will spread like this. Same thing for all pulses. So all pulses will become time unlimited, they will spread out. Instead of being limited pulses like a rectangular pulse, they will start to be time unlimited. But the problem is, when these pulses spread out, each pulse will start to cause interference to all next and previous pulses. This interference, we call it intersymbol, intersymbol interference. ISI. And this is one of the famous terminologies in communication systems, intersymbol interference. It is an interference from the symbols of the same signal on themselves. Okay? In the same interface. So these are the symbols of one signal, same signal. Same for the person is talking, but the symbols will start to cause interference on each other. Why is that? 
This is because when you cut, you cut the frequency domain, you make the band of finite in the frequency domain, these pulses will start to spread out, causing intersymbol interference to each other. Okay, but what is the problem of intersymbol interference? The problem is that the receiver usually takes the decision of each bit at a certain time length. So for example, if you are transmitting one bit every TV, one bit every TV, then the receiver will come to the middle here, it will take a sample, it will measure the amplitude here, and then decides whether this is binary 1 or binary 0. Then the receiver will come here, let's say this is 0, this is TV, at TV it will take another sample, and then it decides whether this is binary 1 or binary 0. At 2 TV it will take another sample, and then decides whether this is binary 1 or binary 0. This is how the receiver usually works. It will sample the signal at 0 TV, 2 TV, 3 TV, and then based on each sample, based on the amplitude of each sample, the receiver is going to decide whether this is binary 1 or binary 0. The problem now is if there is intersymbol interference, large intersymbol interference, the receiver probably will get a lot of errors. Why? Because instead of taking the amplitude being, for example, negative amplitude here, due to the interference coming from all other bits, the amplitude might be might convert to be positive. And then the receiver is going to decode this bit instead of being zero, it will be one. Same thing for if you transmit one and it gets a lot of interference here, then this interference might cause the amplitude to be negative and the receiver will decode this binary one to be binary zero. So this intersymbol interference can cause that the receiver will decode the, the bits with a lot of errors, high error rate. This is because of, let's go to the origin of the problem. This is because we started with a time limited pulse, which is the rectangular pulse, and then its spectrum was unlimited. Then when you try to transmit this spectrum over the channel, you have to cut it. When you cut it, it causes distortion to the time domain, causing intersymbol interference. So we started here with a limited time, limited pulses, unlimited in frequency, and this was the problem because it was unlimited in frequency. When we cut it in frequency, it caused distortion to the time domain. Some people thought, okay, why don't we solve this problem? But uh, uh, by instead of starting with time limited pulses, we can start with frequency limited pulses. So instead of starting with the time domain, choosing the pulses to be limited in the time, we can start by designing the pulses in the frequency domain so that they are limited in the frequency domain. They are limited in the frequency domain. They have the value that we want in the frequency domain. Why don't we start with this? They thought about this. Why don't we start with designing a pulse that has a, a finite bandwidth so that when we transmit it, it will not be cut, it will not cause any distortion. But again, it's the same problem. They found that it's the same problem because if you start with a pulse that has a finite frequency domain, then in the time domain, the pulse itself, it will be, it will be unlimited. So you transmit a pulse here to represent binary 1, you transmit a pulse here to represent binary 0, pulse here to represent binary 1, they will start to interfere with each other. So they found that it is, again, the same problem will happen. So whether you start by designing a pulse that is time limited, or you start with a pulse that is frequency limited, you will end up having intersymbol interference between the pulses, right? Here you start with a time limited, but eventually you cut the bandwidth, so it became time unlimited and intersymbol interference. Here you started with frequency, finite frequency band, frequency limited, but if you start with frequency limited, in the time domain it will be unlimited pulses and they will interfere with each other, causing intersymbol interference again. So this will also cause intersymbol interference. So in both cases, we found that in both cases, in both cases, there will be an intersymbol interference and it might cause that the receiver will have a lot of errors in decoding the bits. Until Nyquist came and he said, Okay, I have a solution to this. The same Nyquist of the sampling theorem. 
He said, I have a solution for this. And this is what they call Nyquist first criteria. He said, okay, what we can do is we can stick to the second case here, where we start with a finite bandwidth, finite frequency domain, and the bits or the pulses will be infinite. The pulses will be uh, unlimited in time domain. However, if we can design the pulses in the time domain, if we can design the pulses in the time domain, so that they do not cause they do not cause interference to other pulses at the decision instance. Few minutes ago, we said that the receiver is taking decision at zero at TB at two TB, right? The receiver takes samples here and then decides whether this is binary one or binary zero, right? So Nyko said, if we can design the pulse so that the pulse amplitude at zero, it is one, and at all other decision instances, TB, two TB, three TB, four TB, whatever decision instance, the interference that this pulse will cause to all other decision instances will be zero. That would be great. Why? Because now the pulse, the pulse will not cause any. It will have amplitude one here, and then at the other decision instance, at decision instance of the next pulse, and the decision instance of the next pulse, and the decision instance of the next pulse, and the previous pulse to the previous pulse, the interference is designed to be zero. So this pulse is going to cause zero intersymbol interference to all other pulses where only at the decision instance at the instance where the receiver takes the decision then Nyquist said that said we can design a pulse where its amplitude is 1 at 0 at its own instance its own decision instance but it causes zero interference at the other decision instance of all other pulses this will solve the problem. Why? Because now if you transmit a pulse here, the first pulse, it will have one, let's say for, for example something like this, one here, zero, zero, zero. And then when you, dis you transmit the second pulse, let's say here, second pulse will have amplitude one, and then zero interference to this pulse. The second pulse will have zero interference to the first pulse, zero interference to the uh, uh, previous pulse, previous pulse. Zero interference to the next, zero interference to the next. Then, if you translate the next pulse, let's say it's negative pulse, it will have amplitude here with a negative sign, and then it will cause zero interference to all next pulses and all previous pulses. So now, when the receiver takes a decision at any time instant, it will see only the amplitude of one pulse and zero interference coming from all previous and all all previous and all next pulses. There will be zero interference coming at this decision ends. Same thing here. When the receiver takes a decision for this pulse, the receiver will find that he has only the amplitude of the second pulse and zero interference coming from all previous and all next timings. So this is what Nyko said. Nyko said, okay, we can start with a pulse that has a finite bandwidth, but we are going to decide the design the pulse so that it has an amplitude one at t equals zero and zero at all other decision instances. And it would be great if we can design this pulse with the minimum bandwidth. If we can satisfy the minimum bandwidth, which is what now we are transmitting with a rate RB, which is one over TB bits per second bits per second. So what is the minimum bandwidth for this? The minimum bandwidth is RB over 2. So the minimum bandwidth minimum bandwidth would be RB over 2. So they said, okay, if we can design a pulse according to Nyquist criteria that satisfies also the minimum bandwidth, that satisfies that the bandwidth is RB over 2, the minimum bandwidth, that would be great, that would be amazing. Because now we have the minimum bandwidth, and at the same time, there is no intersymbol interference that will affect the receiver, right? And when they thought about this, 
they kept searching for a pulse and they found that there is only one pulse that satisfies this criteria, that satisfies Nyquist's criteria and the minimum band that satisfies both. Only one pulse that satisfies Nyquist's criteria and the minimum band, which is the same pulse. They found that the same pulse is the only pulse that satisfies Nyquist and the uh, uh, minimum bandwidth and we are going to discuss this in the next video.